Hey there, John Morris here, and in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the post and get super globals and the difference between the two and how you can use them in your scripts. So we'll start off with the simplest one, which is the get. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually create um, the code for how you would use the get, and then I'll show you how you actually use it. So um, let's just do this and let's do this. Okay, so there we have, um, we've set a variable and we're using the get super global and to get the name and the age. And get is used uh, typically when you're passing stuff via a URL. So what we'll do here is we'll just do, um, we'll do echo and we'll do dot name. And do echo dot age. Okay, so this is going to echo out what we get, what we get from get. Okay, so if we come over to our page here and we refresh, you're going to notice that we get nothing. And that's because nothing has been passed in our URL. So if we come up here and we create a query string parameter, and we, uh, you always do that by starting with a question mark at the end of whatever the URL you have is. And then you're going to type name equals John Morris and age equals 29. Okay, so let's go here. Now you get John Morris and you get 29. If we go back to our code, we can see that that's what we echoed out. So a get allows you to pass uh, information via a URL query string and then get that information and use it in your PHP code. So um, where, where might you use this? Well, a good example that I can show you is uh, from a plugin I created for WordPress that we use on my company's uh, website or my the company I work for. And so if we log in, and we go to, and this website is a website that I built for my company. It's for our, um, you know, our membership site where we teach people all kinds of things about building their own membership site. And um, it's based around the product that we, you know, sell, which is Wishlist Member. And I created a plugin that would allow you to see the members of the site. So I created this plugin. It's called List Users. And if we click on a one of these uh, users, it's going to take us to a page. If you notice up in the URL, we have a query string, and it's ID equals 1006. Okay, so in the code for this particular plugin that makes this um, profile page up, show up, which lists bio information and lists the recent comments by uh, this particular user, um, what it's all based around is we use the get uh, variable or super global to get this ID. Once I have that ID, then I can use it to grab all the information about this user from the WordPress database pull it in and display that particular information for this user. So you'll notice that the member profile, this is the, the page that we're on. If we go back and we go to another user, you notice that the page is the same, but the ID, the query string parameter, is what changes. Okay, so this page is the exact same, is actually the exact same page. The only thing that changes it on here is this ID. I could change this to 29, and it's going to go to the next user. Um, I, I could now, if I completely get rid of this and we go to the page directly, it's not going to display anything. Okay, so that's how you can use a query string parameter um, in your in your scripts, and that's how I've done it um, with this particular script. Okay, 
So that's what you can use get for. Um, you can also use get in say a form. So let's create uh, a form here. And when you do the form method, then you're just gonna do get, okay? And action equals, and actually I'm writing this inside the PHP, which is not gonna work. All right, come up here. And then let's do two inputs. So we'll do input type equals text, and we're gonna do name equals name. And we're gonna do another input. It's gonna be a text input again. And the name is going to be age. And then we'll create our submit button. And we'll close our form. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's created a form that will submit to itself using uh, the get method. Okay. All right, so if we come back over to our site, and we come here and we get rid of this data up here, you'll notice that it's gone. And then now we have our form. So we can enter information in here and hit submit. You notice that it shows up, and you'll also notice that it automatically appends the query string um, at the end of the URL. Okay, so that's one way that you can use get. The downside of get is one, all this information is going to be available up here, so someone can manipulate it if they want. Um, the the second thing is is that uh, the, there's a character limit on the amount of characters that you can actually use in the query string um, as variables. So um, you're limited in that sense. So another variable that you may want to, or another super global that you may want to use and that we recommended using was what's called post. So to do that, it only works with form data. So you're going to change this to post and these here, you're just going to change to post. And you're going to save those and we come back over and we go to the regular and we enter the information and 29 and we submit it and you'll notice that we get the information down here but it's not up here in the query string and so what that happens is when you use the post method the the um, the data submitted by the form is saved in an array called post just like this okay and that that variable post is passed to the action page whatever the destination page is so then you can access all the information that was in that form using this post array okay so if we were to come like this and it works just like any other array so if we were to come here and we were to do print r post we're gonna get uh, a regular listing of all the information uh, in here just like we would name John Morris age 29 okay so it works just like any other uh, array and so that's how you can use post to keep your data from being seen yet still have access to it now this is very powerful this is the beginning of how you're going to start working with a MySQL database because you're going to have a form and you're going to use the post method and you're going to send it to an action page. Well, that action page will be typically, it could either be the same page or it could be another page where you've written a script that grabs this post data and then forms a, a, a SQL query and, and adds the information that was submitted in this form to a database Okay, using PHP code. And we're going to cover that uh, as going forward. So this is kind of the beginnings of starting to work with uh, MySQL is being able to access and manipulate post data. So um, that's the difference between post and get. Pretty much if you're submitting a form, you always want to use the post method. Um, I really can't think of a reason why you would use get. There may be some out there, but it's very rare. The only time you're really going to use get is if you absolutely have to pass parameters in a query string. Like, for example, I did with... Uh, the plugin I wrote. And in that case, doing so is, is fairly harmless. 
um, because it doesn't really give away any information about the user or anything like that. So um, that's about the only time you're really going to want to use the get method is when you're working with uh, query string parameters. Okay, so that's the difference between post and get. That's how and why you would use uh, each one in different situations. So hopefully that was helpful for you and I'll talk to you again soon.